Daisy Guy 2 here, no nonsense know how again. Today, with some very quick, bare bones, basic instructions on how to replace the purge valve on a 2013 VW Beetle with a 2.5 liter. This should go for a lot of other uh, models of this year range that have the 2.5. I'll also show you a few diagnostic tips in there, and I'll put links for this part and anything else I use in this video down below. And as always, if you find this helpful, toss me a thumbs up, maybe even a subscribe or any comments. Hugely appreciated. The code that I have is a P0496, uh, high purge flow in the evaporative system. You might also have a 465, 466, 67, 68, or 69. Uh, there's a lot of other codes that can be associated with this purge valve too. But I've already taken mine apart and diagnosed it, so let's run you through that real quick. Start by removing these two T20 torques, one here and here. Then take some slip joints, remove the clamp off of this boot, and slide it up toward the hard plastic, not the soft plastic here where it can crush it. Now you can pop this whole air box off. You're going to have to go around on each of the sides and pull up real hard. Sometimes you might even need to get a pry bar under there because you've got these four grommets on the bottom that go onto these towers. And I do recommend when you go and put this back on, rub a little grease on here because sometimes these, you know, these can be a bear to get back off in the future. So I like to rub a little grease on those. Now here's our purge valve, and in a nutshell, it's taking vapors from the EVAP system and purging them back in to the engine when the computer commands to do so. Start by checking out your electrical connection here, check for frayed wires, take a pocket screwdriver behind it, and then, you know, you're probably back on this a little bit and slide that connector off, just like so. Don't break that. That's what it looks like on the inside. This is the locking tab here. Uh, so check for corrosions on the pins or any frayed wires. Next, squeeze down and remove this clamp, slide it back, and then wiggle your hose off. Obviously, I've already got mine off. Now, this is a normally closed valve, so the next thing I'm going to do is check uh, its ability to seal. I originally did this with just putting my mouth on the thing, but to demonstrate, I'll put a vacuum pump on it. So I got this hooked up here, I'll pump that up, pump some vacuum, and you can see it's dropping down right away. That tells me the valve's not sealing internally, and that would make sense that the computer's detecting a higher than normal purge flow. And if I put the pump on my new valve I already have, pump it up, you can see that's holding vacuum just fine. To replace it, super easy. Pop it up off of this pedestal here, spin this, get a pocket screwdriver underneath of this clip. You actually can reuse these, I've seen people do it, but I'm going to be replacing that. Then slide that back, put your slip joints on there, lightly squeeze down, and then wiggle that hose loose without ripping the hose. Boom, got her off. Not that it would be very easy to put it in backwards, but do note you have the arrow on here pur showing that the purge flow goes this way. So it's gonna go on in the same order. Now this is an OEM Bosch part here, but if you get the aftermarket ones, sometimes they come with a little pigtail uh, to convert this over to the style on here or even an extension. Uh, this, that's not the case here though. Now I get a new 3 8 clamp I can put on there, slide this new valve into place, push it on the tower, put some dielectric grease on the connection, put this cover back on, like I said, put some grease on those towers, snap it all back together and you're done. This would be a great time to zip out these Phillips screws and check your air filter since that's located inside of here. I've already done that, it looks good. And I'm going to leave you hanging right there since I think you can figure the rest out. I know I didn't go into a lot of diagnostics. Uh, these purge valves are a very common failure. Sometimes they only fail when they're hot or cold. And they can fail in a multitude of different ways. But the main things you're checking for is does it seal? And when you apply 12 volts to it, does it actually open up? So I hope this helps you out some. I definitely appreciate a thumbs up, a comment, or even a subscribe. Check out those links down below if you need the parts. Anyway. Till next time, this is KZ Guy 2 here, no nonsense, no how, and you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you next time.